So right when the mid credit scene opens, we see Captain America and Black Widow. Uh, you can tell that it's right after the events of Infinity War because he still has his big beard. Yeah, they're very sad looking and they're in the kind of lounge living room area that's in the Avengers facility. Fans will recognize it as the same room that they're in in the, uh, the Endgame trailer when they notice the footage on the screen of Scott Lang outside the compound. They're in that room. Uh, so they're looking at some kind of a graphic that is a, a world map and you see these like death tickers that are going up and up and up. So they're getting the sense that like, wow, all these people have died. Thanos did exactly what he meant to do. Uh, and Cap says something to the effect of, uh, this is a total nightmare. And then Black Widow says like, I've had nightmares that are better than this, which is pretty decent dialogue, I guess. Yeah, it's fun. You feel like you're right back in the Avengers story. It's nice mm -hmm. to connect with those characters again. So then immediately after that, Rhodes, AKA War Machine appears and he says something about how like, hey guys, that thing in the other room stopped working. And it's pretty obvious almost immediately that this is the two way pager that was part of the, the mid credit scene in Infinity War. Cause during Captain Marvel, we do actually see the origins story of that. Carol Danvers kind of outfits that regular two-way pager with some Cree communications technology. And I think it's worth kind of noting in the very end of the, the main plot of Captain Marvel is when she, she gives that pager over to Nick Fury and she says some things about how um, the, the range on it can span at least like a few galaxies. Yeah. And, and there is this kind of overarching plot in Captain Marvel about how a Kree character who had been developing light speed travel, and at the very end of Captain Marvel, Carol leaves with some Skrull refugees using this form of travel, trying to find them a new home like several galaxies away. The, the problem is that the pager has stopped beeping. Whatever it is, stop beeping. They said like, oh, we plugged it into an alternate power supply. It's not working off battery anymore. So like, we don't know why it stopped working. And then they're like, oh, maybe we should reboot it. We got to figure out uh, who this is trying to call. Yeah, and Bruce Banner, Bruce Banner also shows up kind of in the middle of this uh, conversation. Too, yeah. so, so it's the four of them and they're kind of discussing like, we don't know who this is broadcasting to. We don't know if this is the right thing we should be doing. And I'm pretty sure it's Cap who kind of makes the argument of Fury clearly did this for a reason and I trust his judgment. Before they can even do anything about it, there she is, Captain Marvel shows up. She's standing right behind them. She's not messing around. She just immediately says, where's Fury? Everyone in the theater gasps. And yeah, that's it. It doesn't seem like this is something that's gonna happen before the beginning of Endgame. I think this, what we both assume is that this is probably a scene that happens within like the first 15 minutes of the actual movie. So a great point of comparison here is gonna be if you if you look back and remember the Ant-Man 1 post credit scene was when you have Captain America and Falcon uh, and they've got Bucky the Winter Soldier in some kind of workshop where his big metal arm is like pressed in between this like huge clamp. I mean that scene is lifted straight out of uh, Captain America Civil War. Um, so you get that early preview like several movies beforehand uh, and I think I think that's exactly what the Captain Marvel mid credit scene is doing in regards to Endgame. I think this scene when Captain Marvel shows up with the other surviving Avengers at the facility is probably going to happen, I would say, like within the t first 20 to 30 minutes of Endgame. Right, but I do think it'd be a little jarring if Endgame started and she was just already part of the team. And I do think this also confirms what we thought, which is that she is in the trailer, they sort of CGI'd her out of the Endgame trailer when they were walking through the facility. And there's kind of like an empty spot in the line of people, which a lot of people guessed was where she stands. And then there was another scene where she was like out in a field. And one thing I want to pose to you right now is, uh, so one of those two scenes happens. It, it looks like it's at the Avengers facility. It's outside, oh, it's in the grass, it's nighttime. And oh, it does look like they're, they're all looking up. Yeah, they're time. all looking yeah. up. So assuming, I'm, I'm assuming hardcore that Carol is in that shot, but what do you think that they're all looking up at, Jake? Because one of the speculations that people had was that it might've been someone else in that shot, like Hawkeye, and they were looking up at Carol arriving. But now I'm starting to think that it's Carol's with them looking up, but I don't know what's arriving. So do you have any ideas? We're expecting a lot of surprises in this movie, so anyone could show up. It could be someone we've never heard of before. It could be a, fa a bad guy, it could be like Thanos yeah. coming back to Earth to uh, mess around. Uh, we don't really know, but I, uh, if I was gonna bet on it, I'd probably say it's Iron Man. Usually the very end post credits in the last few movies has been kind of silly, a little bit goofy. Almost a troll sometimes. Yeah, like, almost a troll. Yeah. Like in, You've sat through the whole thing, the, all the whole credits, and you get like a little joke, not much. But this one did feel like a bit of a payoff. 
Yeah, so uh, so what happens is Goose, the, the ginger cat, who through the course of Captain Marvel we learn is actually a flurkin with interdimensional tentacles that can emerge from its mouth. Uh, late in the movie, it swallows the Tesseract, which is that blue cosmic cube we've seen more often than any other Infinity Stone. It comes back in this movie and then the cat eats it. Yeah. So the cat swallows it and then it's hanging out with Fury in one of the last scenes of the movie. Uh, and then in this post credits sequence, uh, Goose just jumps right up on Fury's desk and uh, gags in the way that vomiting cats do. And then after about, I don't know, 20 to 30 yeah, seconds we, of you, that. You're just gonna watch a cat sort of gag and dry heat for 20 um, seconds, so sorry he, about that. But he barfs out the, the cosmic cube and that's it. Yeah, it's um, all slimy and there's like goo. It is kind of like a big goof, but it does at the same time provide this connective tissue of the full timeline of the Tesseract and how it's kind of moved throughout the MCU through like various hands. So based on the, the Thor post credit scene, we know that S.H.I.E.L.D. had the Tesseract. Um, and then we obviously see that again in the first Avengers movie, um, but the Captain Marvel deals a lot in like, where is a Tesseract during the 90s, uh, and even in the 80s? Because we do know that, given the events of the Captain America, the first Avenger, which takes place in like 1942, in that year, Red Skull claimed the Tesseract and then eventually Cap fought the Red Skull and then cracked. When did S.H.I.E.L.D. get it? Kind of like the, the summary and the implications Everything of what we're dealing with in the post credit scenes. We want to know what you guys think about the post credit scenes. Uh, what kind of impact does it have on the MCU? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, did watching a cat barf uh, really turn you off? Or was that funny to you? Uh, let us know in the comments. All right guys, that's all for this video, but we will see you in the end game.